you all would like to bring this meeting of the Marion County Board of Education to order if we can please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. that we adopt the amended agenda and do you need me to read that? The Since amendment. we have copies? The amendment, please. Consider um, approval of in-depth audit analysis of Marion County Schools activity funds. I second the motion. Uh, questions or comments? All those in favor? Uh -huh. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you all. <coughs> Next is communications and its uh, nominations for vice chairman. I make a motion that we nominate Delane Kingston as vice chairman. I second the motion. Okay. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. I need to. You need a motion. I need to, to cease to cease nominations. Uh -huh. I make a motion that we cease the nominations. Second motion. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The nominations are ceased. Next is the election of the vice chairman. I'll make a motion uh, that Mr. Delane Pinkston uh, be our Vice Chairman of the Marion County School Board. I'll second the motion. No questions about that? Anybody? <laughs> okay. <laughs> all, those in, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank Opposed? you. You're welcome. Congratulations, Mr. Vice Chairman. Uh, now that we've got all the real important things out of the way, we'll get on to the rest of the agenda. Next, we have our superintendent's report. All right, I'd just like to start out by saying that uh, today completed the first five days of school, and uh, we're looking at 169 more days left of instruction. As I indicated on opening day, I like to count down. Uh, we had a great opening day, and you all were there, and I appreciate everyone's support. Uh, we uh, started out with just a, a light breakfast, and I spoke with the staff about what my passion uh, about performance and uh, what that looked like and things that I value, like time and personnel. thought it was a very nice opening day ceremony. Uh, we finished that morning up with positive behavior intervention strategies and we did that as a district. And so we really focused in on what we can do as a district uh, to uh, ensure that everything we do is about supporting student behavior. Um, and, and I'd like to report that, you know, every, everyone district-wide must, you know, really did a lot of, of good planning because that first, those first three three days of school, and, and even these 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 last first two of this week, I mean, it's been really smooth. Uh, you know, uh, I've, I've I've been really pleased with the response that I've got, and we we're, we're getting down to teaching and learning right away. And, and I do have a lot more things to report. However, I'm going to turn it over to Tim to talk about enrollment because that's one of the things that we want to look at right away as soon as school opens. We've got projected enrollment, and then we have actual enrollment. 
and you know as board members one of the things you do is you provide the staffing for schools based on that projected enrollment and we want to make sure that we're providing the support that the, the schools need based on the projected enrollment um, and there may be some questions you have and if, if there's more questions that you have we can always talk more about that at a later time but you know this is the one this is something that the board does to support what's going on in the classroom providing staff Mr. Lyons. Okay, as of today, these are the current enrollment figures we have. Um, you can see if I got it broken down by <clears throat> grade level across the top, and then each individual uh, school totals within there, so you have something to, to look at. But probably what you are most interested in are what our projected numbers were versus what our actual numbers have turned out to be. And right there kind of speaks for itself. For the most part, it's pretty close. Um, elementary is a little bit off on one side there, so in the high school. Does anyone have any questions? Do you have any questions? The, you know, we will continue to monitor enrollment. And we, we, have, we do have a lot of movement in between, especially elementary schools, and it took us a little while to get those nailed down, uh, some duplicate enrollments. But uh, Mr. Lyons and Ms. Farmer have, have, have worked really, really close with the attendance clerk to make sure that this is accurate data. Uh, you know, he's looking at it in terms of funding, and I'm looking at it in terms of do we have enough staff in the building to support instruction? So, and, and that's the whole part of having a leadership team. We're looking at it from all angles. How does it look right now as far as enough uh, employees in the uh, each school for instruction with the numbers that you have? Is it too early to tell? Well, now, I mean, the high school obviously it kind of jumps out there as being maybe overstaffed, but. They, were, they take great pains to remind you that this changes almost daily at the high school. Well, and, and I would like to, to, to mention that actually what we did at the high school is because we have the alternative school, it appears that the high school is over, overstaffed by one person. But in reality, we have three teachers, two periods per each, that's actually going to the UC Spalding Academy to provide specific content instruction. So actually, it's a, it's a balance. So rather than assigning one teacher to the UC Spalding Academy, we actually have we have assigned math, English language arts, science. So that's how that's pulled out. And I do know of one other uh, elementary said there was one other student who's not yet enrolled. He, uh, I think he had a surgery, uh, and so he hasn't gotten there yet. So that is one more number that'll be added. So these numbers will change a little bit. So we might. You know, before you want to start making changes, you might want to wait and we can revisit it in a few weeks when these things are set. I think the date is September, Lisa, that we, we normally set it for. Yeah. So we're looking at September. And, and we'll monitor that. Mr. Lyons and I will, will look at that uh, daily to make sure. And you can be assured that if the principals feel like they need more staff, they'll be called. And, and we'll look at that based on numbers. And that's are, what they're supposed to do. Are we pretty balanced to what we want to move students? like from one building to the other? Are most of the class sizes in pretty good shape? Uh, well, Calvary's the only one that is, uh, it is at capacity, um, but they've got everybody that they've got now. Uh, have, we haven't, to my knowledge, moved anyone unless they were someone that we moved last year who, adopt, who opted to go back to the same school again. Um, but of course, numbers coming in or, or people coming in, it is a, an area where we do get some enrollment there. Uh, we may have to look at that. Currently, they have everybody they should have, and everybody that's there, from what we can tell, belong in that district. Uh, evidently, I missed something. What is that number one past the 12th grade right there? Yeah. That's um, someone who's finished uh, all 12 years, but is uh, staying for the, until they're 21. Um, we have one student in the high school. Okay. All right. And we will keep you posted if, if any of those numbers soar. 
Uh, just, just to keep going along with my superintendent's report, what, what I have uh, elected to do for my superintendent's report is to actually do that around the goals that we talked about last last week at the work session. And obviously, our, num our number one goal is leadership. And then within those areas, we have three focus areas. And the first one is teaching and learning. And what I want to report to you about the teaching and learning and what we've been doing in the district the past uh, four weeks is we started having a conversation with our leadership team about what are the five essential elements in a lesson plan. Now what that might look like in different classrooms and different mid buildings may look different or it may be in a different order or it may be called something different a warm-up or a bell ringer, which is basically how does the teacher get that started. But we started having that conversation in our leadership team about what does that look like, the five essential elements of a lesson plan. We've also discussed what is your assessment plan at the school level, what is your assessment plan. In other words, how do you plan to monitor progress? What tools are you going to use? Okay. Also, we've asked schools along with, and I've also asked the central office staff to do this well, just like I have, but what is your plan? You know, how do you plan to approach professional growth in your building? A lot of what you hear is you may hear the acronym of PLC. Well, what you're talking about is a professional learning community. And within that professional learning community, you're going to be reviewing things like lesson plans, the assessments, is it a quality assessment? Does the assessment, is it congruent? Does it match the standard? So what does that plan look like? And also, a, uh, we ask that we sit down and look at all of the programs that we have implemented in a school. And we actually have chart paper. We actually had them take a piece of chart paper and write down all of the programs that's currently going on at that building level. And then what we want to do is, as we implement our assessments or as assessment data comes in, you know, are the programs that we have on this piece of chart paper, how effective are they, are, are the programs based on student achievement data? Does that make sense? So, for example, you all hear things like Read 180, Accelerated Reader, Accelerated Math, Read to Achieve, Reading Recovery. Those, those are things you've probably heard over the years. So the question is, you know, here are our programs and how effective are they and is it about what we believe or is it about actually data? And, and that's one of the things that we've, we've talked about in my goals is it sh that we should be making data-driven decisions, okay? So that's teaching and learning. Then when we talked about high expectations, the biggest thing with high expectations is leadership. And as I mentioned before, we are working on John Maxwell's 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. As a leadership team, we have actually gone over the first two laws. The first law is the law of the lid. In other words, a leader has a lid, and wherever their lid is, everyone underneath them rises to that lid. So the, the higher the lid level, everybody rises to that lid. The second law is the law of influence. Are we leaders based on our position or is it because we have influence over the people and are they, are they making decisions because you are influencing them to make those decisions? So there's 21 laws of leadership. We're going to work through a book study and a video series and uh, you know over the course of the year we will, will have completed those 21 laws of leadership and then I'm sure we'll go on to, to some more work. Um, Monday we spent two hours working on leadership and customer service because that's the foundation because we've got to lead and we've got to provide customer service because we've got to make deposits so that we can make withdrawals as we ask people to do things like let's maybe look at doing our lesson plans a little bit different if that makes sense. Um, also, we are continuing our work on the new teacher and new principal effectiveness system. Uh, we currently have four administrators in the district that have actually passed the uh, about a 40-hour test. Uh, so we, we've got some 
principals that are currently working on that. And as you all know, we do have two principal vacancies that, and, and we will help them through that as well. But that's something that we are working on. The new effectiveness system not only uh, affects teachers, it affects principals, and this year it'll affect me as a superintendent. That'll be the way I'll be evaluated. Goal setting at each school level. You know, we've talked about what are your goals, which goes back to what is your plan. Uh, very similar to if you're going on vacation, where you're going on vacation, you got to have a map and how are you going to get there. For schools and school councils and even grade level teams, you know, that does a grade level team have a goal of all first grade students are going to exit first grade on reading level? And then the question is, how, how are you going to do that? And how are you going to monitor progress? That's high expectations. Um, safety, one of the things I wanted to talk to you all about is, as you all know, unfortunately in a school system we do have tragedies. All of our, <coughs> uh, our employees, you can see we're all wearing our badge. That was one of the things that they asked us to do is just so that we can be recognized in case there is, uh, would, would happen to be a tragedy. But uh, if you'll remember the Connecticut tragedy last winter, uh, Chief Brady has uh, approached me about the possibility of working with them on a safety precaution, especially at the high school. We do have a school resource officer located there. And he said that with you know all the events that has come to be, they would be willing to actually place a gun safe at the high school. Uh, for the school resource officer or any officers that may have to come in the building in case there was an intruder. Um, and, and the reason I'm bringing that to you is if that's something that we're interested in, that Chief Brady would, would like to come and present that to the board and talk about that. Um, it would be a case where only himself, his captain, uh, the instructor of the firearms and the school resource officer would be the only people that would have access to that and it would be through a fingerprint type uh, safe. It would not have a key, it wouldn't have a, a combination, it would be fingerprint protected. But he said, you know, with those hallways and the length of those, you know, what they've discovered, if an intruder comes into the building, the only way to stop the pain and anguish that's going to happen is that person's got to be uh, stopped and uh, rather than going out to the car to get a uh, weapon to do that with if that was in the building it would just be a lot quicker means to stop the intruder so you know I, I think safety you know is one of those things that we always have to keep that's just one of those things that has to happen um, an, another high expectation I would assume that you would have for me as we monitor is policies and procedures. And one of the items that we're going to add uh, that is down on the consent agenda is to request a proposal for HVAC systems. You know, as you all know, we cannot enter into a contract. It has to happen yearly. And anything over $20,000 needs a bid. This is one of those cases that we need to do this. And the HVAC system is actually three components. One um, is actually uh, the training, uh, the support that we get for the system itself. The second one is the water treatment, which is the water that goes through. It has to be treated so everything runs properly. And the last part of that is actually the control systems where that we can monitor that through the computer and we can look to see how the, how the units are running. Uh, we do have over 500 units in our district. That's a lot to keep people warm and cool. Uh, but and, and we are we're we're pleased with our current service. But we do have to be aware of there's policies and procedures. And our board attorney has advised that this is something that needs to be bid. And I'd like to, to you know uh, request that we bid that as a group of services together. So that's that's a consent item. Well, let me touch on that for just a okay. second. Um, what do we need um, from this contractor, so to speak, uh, since we spent all this money on controls, you know, where it can be controlled from the, the bus garage. We, uh, 
understand things are going to break down and you're going to have to have new things. Is that what this contractor is going to do? That's, that's the first part, the training and the technical assistance, as well as we get a reduced rate on contract labor when they do come make repairs. That's the system one. You know. Systems two is you refer to the water treatment on all our water loops that come nine months out of the year and treat the water, like all the other chemicals to keep the water flow from stopping at the systems and keeping that water flow going throughout the buildings. System three, the very machine part of the integrated controls is the controls that uh, we regulate the thermostats and also do the diagnostic work from the computer to troubleshoot and everything like that to cut down on time and resources on that. So there's actually three agreements. So it's all pretty much preventive maintenance. Each, each taking a different facet of the, of the whole project. 